Donkey Kong is back with a Donkey Kong inspired game. And that game is Congo Bongo for your Intellivision. And according to the label art, Congo has been shrunk in size. And this dude is way too happy to be choked by a snake. Let's go ahead and take Congo Bongo, pop it in my Intellivision and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Congo Bongo was the only Intellivision game published by Sega and carries a copyright year of 1983. It is based on the 1983 Sega arcade game. According to Moby Games, it was programmed by Mike Null. According to the manual, you are a hunter on a jungle safari and you are trying to get even with the mischievous gorilla named Congo Bongo. Yeah, that's right. You're trying to get even with an animal. Great. At the beginning of the game, you see why, as there's a nice little intro scene where a monkey who supposed to be Congo Bongo sets your tent on fire catching you on fire as well. Congo Bongo is an isometric arcade style game for one or two players alternating and has one standard mode of difficulty. The game has no overlay but is fairly easy to control with the disc controlling your movements including climbing and the upper side buttons being used to jump. The game contains two of the four screens from the arcade game. You get three lives and you lose a life every time you are hit with a coconut, fall off a path too far, or land in the water. I'm telling you someone needs to teach these video game heroes how to swim. On the first screen you must avoid coconuts while climbing cliffs, sliding down a bridge, and jumping over rivers as you make your way to the top of the screen. There's also a group of monkeys before the final river jump that can try to slow you down by jumping on your back. They don't really do this so much the first time you're on the screen, but they get more aggressive as the game goes on. If they get on your back, you can jump to shake them off. When you return to the first level as you progress through the game, the coconuts will fall faster and faster as well. The manual also states that the fourth time you return to the level, a snake will appear on the bridge, and the eighth time you return to the level, the river jump will become shorter since your hunter is getting more tired. Once you reach the top of the screen, you'll move on to the second screen. On the second screen, you must jump on a lily pad and then jump on a hippo and then jump on an island in the middle of the river. As you progress through the game, the lily pads will occasionally shrink into the water and the hippos will change their patterns. Once you jump on the island, some ferocious fish will appear. If the fish turns orange, it is about to snap at you and throw you into the river if you are on his back at that time. You must jump on their backs, making your way to the other side. Once you make it to the other side, you have to avoid charging rhinos. And as the game progresses, more rhinos will appear and they will move faster and faster. Once again, you can make your way to the top of the screen where Congo Bongo is. Do this successfully and you will light Congo on fire. The manual makes it sound like you're only lighting his foot on fire to get even with him, but the game makes it look like you're lighting his entire body on fire as it goes through the colors of the rainbow. It must be a Skittles fire. Once you do this, your game will give you a congratulations screen and return you to the first stage at a higher difficulty. Graphically speaking, the game is nice and colorful, and the stages do have a nice 3D effect to them. However, if I was to nitpick, they could have made Congo Bongo look more like himself during the intro screen. And during the game, Congo actually looks more like a giant monkey than a giant ape, although I did like the animation of him sleeping on the second stage. Also on the first stage, the coconuts do flicker a lot, and when I made this video, that ended up showing them occasionally disappear although you do see them when you're playing. Sound and music wise, the game does a pretty good job, although the repetitive music during the stages might get annoying to some after a while. Family friendly wise, I assume this game would get an E for everyone rating if released today, although the idea of getting revenge on an animal by setting him on fire is pretty awful when you think about it. At the time I researched on eBay including shipping, the game was pretty hard to come by. There's one loose copy that sold for $55 and another one that sold for $74. So what did I think of Congo Bongo on the Intellivision? Technically, this game is fairly impressive, but I had many problems with it. To start with, I'm not a fan of isometric view games, so it already is a strike going against it. There's also times that my characters seem to get stuck on various parts of the stages, and making jumps, especially on the second stage, was hard to judge at times. There were many times I landed on a platform only to see a death animation, telling me somehow I failed the jump even though it seemed like I should have made it. In addition, the controls were also pretty picky, as once again, this is a game where you pretty much have to press straight up, down, left, or right for your character to move on a 16 direction 
disc. There were many times I was just slightly off so my character froze. When you combine all these together I ended up getting frustrated many times during the game. The first stage wasn't so bad but the second stage was absolutely killer. Usually when I play a game this style I anticipate to be able to go through the first set of stages within my first handful of times playing the game but in Congo Bongo on the Intellivision it took me dozens and dozens and dozens of tries just to pass the second stage even once. At first I had a hard time simply jumping from the hippos to the middle platform and then jumping on the fish became tricky. Sometimes when they turn their bodies and you're on them you would fall off for no apparent reason. It was also very difficult to judge the final jump on the other side of the river and simply passing the rhinos and climbing up to Congo Bongo without my character getting stuck on some invisible part of the stage was quite a challenge. Once I successfully completed the stage I did have a great feeling of satisfaction but not enough to overcome all the frustration it took me to get there nor enough to make me really want to return and try and do it again. It's a bit of a shame as it's a nice looking game but it's just not that fun for me to play. So where am I going to rank Congo Bongo on the Intellivision? To be honest I had a hard time deciding between this and Donkey Kong which is sitting at the bottom of my rankings. This game is better made but at least when I play Donkey Kong I know I'll get through the two stages rather easily. However in the end I will put Congo Bongo over Donkey Kong as even with all its drawbacks it's still more enjoyable than the trash version of Donkey Kong on the Intellivision. So out of the six games I've now ranked on the Intellivision Congo Bongo is jumping into the five position. Congo Bongo on the Intellivision is a nice looking game from a distance but is only recommended for serious collectors. So what do you think of the game? Whether you agree or disagree with me feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. And I'm a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time I'd like to thank Jose for supporting the show at patreon.com slash gamer. Thank you Jose. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care and if a giant ape sets your foot on fire while you're camping, just go check into the local Holiday Inn Express instead of getting revenge on him. Trust me, it will never end well.